Well, good morning. Welcome, folks, to the stream. Um, this is Flying with Mike, and uh, today we're in Perth, Perth, Australia, getting ready to head up to Singapore. Um, we got the uh, GitHub Spark 747-400. We're in the BCF uh, version for cargo. Uh, flying a uh, FedEx flight. Granted, this is not a true livery out there. There are no Atlas or any 7.4s today painted in FedEx. But um, the guys over at FedEx Express Virtual uh, made this livery. And, well, quite frankly, I really like it, so I'm going to fly with it. Today's flight will be on Millennium Aviation uh, Airways or Airline and uh, otherwise known as Mac Air, uh, is one of their flights. But uh, we'll also be on VATSIM. So if you want to join us, uh, we had someone ask, do I fly on VATSIM? It's not often, but occasionally I do. So here we go, folks. We're going to hop up into the cockpit. Uh, first thing we'll do is run through the uh, acceptance here of powering it up and then do our pre-brief and then get into pre-flight. So with that, we are up in the cockpit. Sorry, I feel like I'm out of breath and I don't know why. Okay, so we're up here in the cockpit, three stories above the ramp, and uh, we're gonna get right into the preliminaries. Uh, whoops, let's get back up here. Got to get used to being in a new plane. Okay, so the checklist calls for the uh, utility left and right to be turned on. Uh, battery switch, which is right below them to be turned on. Standby power brought on. Uh, hydraulic pump demands coming on. And they, I'm sorry, the uh, engine uh, switches are turned on. The demands are these switches. They are kept off. Uh, we're also going to turn on the bus and the uh, drive disconnects while we're here. Now we're going to head down to the uh, middle of the panel. Um, big things we're looking here for are the alternate gear and flaps. They need to be in the off position. So no lights on either of these and the uh, uh, gear is in a guarded position. Uh, Check to make sure the gear lever is down. And I have come in here, folks, and found it in the up position. So always uh, make that happen. And then your parking brake is all the way down here. Make sure that's set. And then we're going to turn and go to the ground power. First thing I want to do... Um, standby. Takes just a couple seconds. Oops. All right, now we'll get in here and do it. To get ground power to this plane, all you do is your FMC, and this is the only one right now powered up, uh, will come to the main menu, which is what it's on. Click ground handling. Then uh, ground services. There you'll see ground power. Once you click that, it is now um, turned on to the plane. Come up to the top. Click uh, one or both, and now they're both on. Okay, and then when we come back down, everything's powered up. Whoop. Okay, I'm just getting that one PFD set up. Okay, the final checks here for this are the ox. We would do our oxygen mask test. The oxygen mask test. Sorry. Combined a few words there, it feels like. Um, also going to get some cockpit lighting set. I like just turning them all the way on the panels. Oh, we're going to start dealing with this. Okay, we'll take care of that on the next. Once we uh, get done with this flight. And uh, the oxygen test would be done here. We just don't have the uh, proper gauge in here to be able to do it. Not sure if that's on their list or not. Uh, emergency lights will come back up top here. That is up here. Make sure it's guarded. And which, when it's in the guarded position, it's armed. Windshield wipers are off. And navigation lights on 
logo lights on. And we've already got the bus tie and the Gen Connects on. That's what brought the whole thing up. I'm also going to bring up the rest of my cockpit lighting that I like. That is your preference, however you want to set it. Okay, and that, folks, wraps up the uh, uh, <clears throat> cockpit acceptance or preliminary cockpit inspection. And as soon as we get some toolkit brought over, um, here it comes right now. And that and so from here we're going to move into the pre-flight brief all right so as you can see we're in perth here on the uh, western coast of australia i think it's actually the southwestern and you can see it's dotted with showers so that's part of what we're going to be working with here let's kind of zoom in a little pick up the airport here in just a tad Okay, so as you can see, if you zoom in on the live map, you get the taxiways. Sometimes it tells you the names, sometimes it doesn't, but it, you know, it helps highlight them. It'll even sometimes, folks, pull up parking spots. Not all the time, I've found out. All right, so moving on, let's get into, oh, here's our weather report right now, down here at the uh, lower left. Uh, as of uh, 9.30, so we're about 45 minutes old on this. And we just now got a shower over the airport, so uh, winds are 0808. No reported uh, problems with visibility. A few clouds of 4,800 feet, 25,000 ceiling. Oh. Excuse me, folks, for yawning. It was a 24-hour shift yesterday. <clears throat> Temperature outside is 22 degrees Celsius. Remember, in Australia, it is summertime moving into fall there. And it's 19 degrees Celsius on the dew point. And we'll set an altimeter of uh, 1006 on the Q&H. Going to the actual flight plan, that's current flight over here. Right in the upper left, you see the flight. So today's routing will be off runway three. Uh, it's a little bit of a taxi to get to it. Uh, Aven, Avnix, three departure to Avnix. Then we'll get on the November 752 to Pub. J, uh, G579 to Rope, Repo, Repo, Repo 1 Alpha into Singapore. Uh, for the two left arrival. Now, last time I flew in with X-Plane, this airport wasn't in the database. Navigationally, I couldn't select SID stars. There's been an update since. I really hope they fix this. They may not have. We'll find out. <clears throat> Loadout for today. Uh, we're going to stay in kilograms when we fly the 7-4. So it's uh, 71,752 kilograms. We put 12 people up top. So the zero fuel weights, 241, 203 on the kilogram side. Our goal is to load 6,389, uh, uh, let's see, 63,891 pounds. And we're going to run with a cost index of 100. Now, Game plan for the cruise altitude initially, 34,000. At up knot, we'll go to 36,000. Okay. <clears throat> for the uh, Perth area, we're only 67 feet above sea level. Uh, we're going to be going off on a 11,200 or 300 foot runway. Transition in this area is 10,000. Uh, runway heading is 18, so, or I'm sorry, 16. Wow, everything's kind of, All right, so pretty intense runway here. We, we're kind of in the middle of getting loaded here. I think what I've got, let's see if I still have it pulled up. For 71,000 kilograms, that 
equivalent uh, equals out to about 158,200 pounds of cargo. Just to give you an idea. All right. So let's move over to the other side of the ledger. And what I want to do here, and I just noticed my laptop's not powered up. So let's uh, get these things going here. Since we're kind of dead in the water, if you'll pardon the expression. Okay, now we're looking a little better here. Um, just waiting for this screen to come up. All right, so uh, with Sim Toolkit, let's just continue on. Um, we're at uh, okay, so you're seeing Perth uh, International to Changi. Uh, there's our weather. We're in the uh, 747. They're calling it a. F the only reason is is that way I can just easily translate payloads. We're going to have Pratt Force 4062 engines. And again, excuse me for yawning there. Uh, air distance for today's flight, 2,185 uh, miles, cost index of 100, and our average wind, 261 at 10. So we really don't have much push, if you will, in the atmosphere to help us. Uh, let's see here. Working our way down. Uh, here's our steps again that we saw on the other side. Uh, 34,000 and up not at uh, 36. Here's our fuel breakdown. Um, we don't have E-tops. We're a four-inch and we get to not have to worry, but we're going to run a 13.7 on the reserve. Okay, and Working our way down, uh, Kuala Lumpur is our uh, uh, alternate, runway 32 right, 300 miles away, and here is our routing for that. And then our schedule is planning us 5-hour, 20-minute run. We could get done in 5 hours. We'll see once we're wheels up. All right, so finally we're down to the weight breakdown. 12 passengers, uh, cargo load of 70,500 kilograms. That'll bring us up to a zero fuel of 2,000 or 241,200 pounds ish. If you want the exact numbers on the right side, 241,203 on the kilograms. Okay. And that, folks, pretty much wraps the rapid fire stuff up. Let's just quickly look at the chart so you can see what we're flying. Here's where we are down here. And here's Singapore up here. And these are the different, uh, if we were to have been twin engine aircraft, the different ETOP points. Significant weather wise. I uh, bet you wouldn't have guessed we have significant weather here. Uh, isolated CBs up to 38,000. Yeah, kind of just had one, looks like, roll over the airport. Which means we will also have probably turbulence uh, to 43,000 moderate, or light, I'm sorry, light chop. Second half of the flight, uh, we've got some embedded uh, isolated thunderstorms south of Indonesia, and looks like we may have a decent landing in Singapore. Again, actually, we don't show any turbulence, but we can always expect it in these uh, isolated uh, thunderstorms here. Winds. All right, so we're starting, and we're going to start at 34. So here we go with, looks like things are going to kind of flip on us about midway there. You can kind of see they're kind of westerlies here. And as we get to WINH-ish area here, it's going to switch to easterly winds. 
So, but again, it's straight on, you know, straight on cross. And it looks like it continues on at 39,000 feet. As you can see, again, just a little, as you would expect, stronger. Okay. So, that, folks, is going to really wrap us up here. I am going to do one more thing here. Ah, I thought they were in there. I'm glad I did this. Okay, there we got the uh, nav graph loaded up. Oh, I don't have it loaded. All right, so bear with me here. Okay. And save. All right, so we're departing runway three. And we're going to do an ILS. And we'll get the rest along the way. Just to give you an idea of where we're parked here. Now you're not going to... This one? No, this one. No. This one. Alright. We're right here, folks. So that gives you an idea of where on the map we are when you look here. We're right in that area. We'll be taxiing out uh, around the ramp to taxiway Alpha all the way down. Alrighty, and our Sid. Okay, so we got that all lined up, and we'll take care of that when we get to that point in the brief here in the uh, checklist. But for now, uh, it's loaded up. We're going to throw... Uh, get back into the cockpit here and press on. There it goes. Sorry about that, folks. You didn't get to see any of that, and I do apologize. Uh, anyway, we'll show it outside real quick. There's the catering trucks, the fuel trucks already in, and the air carts there, and there's a little Mercedes driving around that comes with the crew. Uh, aircraft's already got the weight of cargo in it, and like I said, it's real neat to see. We'll stand off so you can see the whole operation. And not sure when we're going to see the cargo load or the uh, belt loader come up, but uh, it's like I said, it's neat. It's one of those cheesy things, you know. So. All right, so now we'll hop into cockpit. If I can hit the right thing here on my laptop so I can try and avoid this more, these errors. And... Okay, so that's going to load up here soon. So I do apologize, folks, for not realizing it didn't load up right. So we are now up and running as I like to normally do things. I'm going to, before we start this brief, uh, go ahead and give you the route and the METAR here in, oh, yep, yep, that's on me. There we go. And the METAR where we're at. Okay. So, <clears throat> continuing on, let's get on the upper panel here. First steps are going to be um, IRS 1, 2, and 3. That is these three switches. Uh, we need to set to a line, then nav. And you can confirm that by coming down. 
you'll see the times clicking off. Okay, back up top, the EEC switches, otherwise known as electric engine controls. That's these four switches. Make sure they say norm and the guards are down. Okay, pushing on to the fire protection. That's all it's going to do. And, of course, if we could get down and see the main panel, we'd see fire and this and that and the other things. Uh, interrupt switches. Passenger oxygen is in the normal setting and guarded. Uh, flight deck lights are set. Stave trim is uh, all the way down here. And they're kind of orientate you a little bit here. So, you know, we're on the uh, panel. I'm, uh, I'm going to call it the knee knee panels where the crew's knees are. Uh, right next to the fuel switches are your cutouts. Make sure they are in the auto position. And uh, we're going to set the MCP, the uh, FMS or FMC and hydraulics. Okay, we'll do the hydraulics first. That's the easiest. Now we're going to come down and get into it here with the uh, FMC. All right, so we're going to, I did that without, just kind of follow along. We're clicking FMC, pilot's route, F plan, boom. All right, so we're at Yankee Papa Papa Hotel, and we're going to Whiskey, Sierra, Sierra, Sierra. Okay, now the flight number that uh, Millennium Aviation is running under today is... Well, I had it up, but... Ah, uh, and all of that r flurry there for, went and got rid of it, so... Um, Millennium Aviation Company, uh, we're under uh, Mac Air 15. So what we're going to do is just use our Mac Air call sign, which is Mac, Mac 0572. And I assume they just throw the zero in there just to uh, um, keep it four numbers. All right, so from this point, we are... Not aligned. Hang on, I forgot to do that. Ident. Position. Yankee. Uh, where are you? Papa Papa Hotel. And we can go with this GPS. It looks good. And route. Now we're where we were. Okay, so now when everything aligns, everything will be in the way it should. So... Let's start with the... Ah, they haven't fixed it. Come on. Okay, it's going to actually be a really short uh, setup here. We can't do Singapore. We're going to have to hand interim and then hope for the best. All right, so we're going on runway three, and we're going to fly Avian EX three. Click Execute. I really wish this Execute light would be brighter. All right. Click F Plan. Now we see it in there. Now we're going to click Next. <clears throat> From here, we're going to go simply over to our flight plan and basically put it in up to, of course, the arrival. Err. Okay, so from AVN, we're going November 572. Oh, yeah, it helps to type it in, Mike, right? 752. Look at that. Always works every time. 2 PLB, Papa Lima Bravo. Kill the discontinuity there. One more to go. Uh, G579. And 
then R E P O V. Okay, that's as far as we can go, folks, since it won't let us put in our arrival. As soon as we click it, no procedures. Oh, that just irritates me that you're trying, you have a chance to outdo Microsoft and you don't have everything loaded in. That's sad. Anyway, and if any of you out there know what I need to do to, because this one, O'Hare of all places, um, a couple of others I've run into where they don't have it. And I'm like, really? These are major airports, folks. <clears throat> Although for some of them, the way they line up, sometimes it's not, you know, they, they ought to let us just plug the fixes in. All right, so legs. And we'll verify this up here shortly. Um, what I am going to do is pull up nav charts for Singapore. I tell you, some days <laughs> going back to Microsoft seems like a good move. Okay. Hang on a second. Of course, it's got to do this. And it's going to go non responsive. Okay. There we go. All right. It's all confused. Hey, it finally caught up to us. All right, so our departure out of here is... Well, whoa, whoa, I've got that already loaded. Okay, so... Right. Uh. Ah, good for us. It's not tough. It's R E P O V to R E M E S R E. M E S two S A M K O. Okay. Execute. And altitude wise. That ain't going to work. Okay. All right, folks. So we got that all closed out. Ugh. Coming back up to route. Let's go over to the perf performance page, and we can see 63,900 kilograms are loaded. All right, so we're caught up here. Sorry for all that uh, dead uh, air there, folks. Um, I really try not to, to left ILS. And for those curious, what we'll be doing is parking 
in the west cargo area. It's really in the northwest corner uh, for the flight. Uh, I think it's like 500s or something like that. But anyway, so that's way down the road for the arrival brief. So, all right, so we got that all canceled out. Okay, so zero fuel weight. We said 13.7. Cost index 100. Yes. And initial cruise 34,000. Now, this, I'm not 100%. They haven't got it logically programmed in because I know you don't see it on your nav displays or cruise page. But uh, I still put it in there. Okay, so we've got that loaded. Um, next page. Now, for here... Unfortunately, again, I'm using a program that I can't bring over. Um, uh, weather update to start with. Runway 3, dry. Runway 2, left. Hang on, folks. Clearing off a lot of superfluous data. That's a big word after not much sleep last night. Okay, we're going to go to ACARS, takeoff data. Okay, so. All right, a couple of really important things here. All right, make sure we got the right engines. Okay, everything looks good. Okay, so this is going to be a flaps 10 departure. But for the power settings, we are going to be TO2. with a uh, select temperature of 46 degrees. And we'll keep it at climb two. That's one thing I really wish it would help me with. Okay, and our winds are 090 at 11. Okay, well, we'll revisit that here in a minute. Um, and then we're going to go to the takeoff page. Now, this is where this is still a work in progress. Now, it looks like you can't put anything in there, but we actually can. Um, but let's first get the major data in here that we can. Flaps, we said, are 10 degrees. Now, that is not our V speeds that we're going to go with. Uh, what the aircraft is uh, communicating to us uh, is 147 V1. And again, you don't see it go in. That kind of, I would have thought that's one of the easier things, but I don't know what these guys have done to get this far as they've gotten in two years. Uh, so I'm not going to sit back and complain too hard on them. Um, then again, there's VR, and we're going to climb out at 164, or I'm sorry, V2 is 164, CG, 16%. Now they're telling us zero and zero on the trim. I don't know if I want to go with that, but what I can do is go to this page. Okay, 
I don't know when this must have just been the latest update there, folks. Uh, coming up, uh, just making the final calculations. See, here they're going 5.6. So, we're going to kind of see uh, what we uh, will come up with here. Next is the FM or MCP. Basically, your autopilot up here. Um, just looking ahead here real quick. Okay. So what we're going to first do is turn the flight directors on. Next up, we're going to set our indicated airspeed to... Let me make sure we're not coming down doing that. Okay, we're not. Nope, okay. So we're going to set four. And if you're not sure, usually all you'd have to do is uh, come in and look at them. But they don't change. So you just click on the line, select next to them. Just make sure to click it twice. Oh, wait a minute. Wrong one. 164. And I go V2 plus 10. I know a lot of y'all out there do V2 uh, plus, hang on a second, um, 5. I do plus 10. Zebo actually in their checklist goes 15. So folks, it really is airline driven, pilot driven as to what it's going to be. And 10.06. We're going to get that set up here real quick. Mainly so I don't forget. And you still got to set that one over there, which we're going to do real quick again, because I know myself way too well. Okay. And we'll zoom it in so you can see. Okay, then we're going to set runway heading. Sixteen. Initial climb, 34,000. May have to adjust if our SID says something different. Which I got caught on last flight. So thank you there, Bleach Clorox. All right. Um, that is our MCP. That is set. The only thing I like to do Make sure we're set for auto on our bank angle. Okay, we're going to continue on now with the pre-flight checks. We've got the IRSs aligned, the FMC aligned, the MCP set up. So back up to the top, we've got our uh, number four pump in auxiliary and the rest of the drives on. Cross feeds, one and four. Let's take a look at that first. How are we loaded fuel-wise? Okay, so we have fuel above, not much, but above 13.6. So what we'll do up here, we're going to go ahead and turn these two on. Um, fuel pumps on. Okay, let's come back and see what's happened. All right, now if you been on previous flights with us nine out of ten times we fly with just tank to engine which means this tank only fills this tank or this runs this engine this tank this engine so forth today because we have more fuel spread out among the wing we actually have the full pipe running so meaning follow the green line so that means this pump this engine here when when fired up and running could fuel number four Vice versa. These uh, override pumps help as well, and they're feeding basically this this crossover uh, line, trying to keep things balanced. So, so that's what's going on there. So the audio system is back up here. We're in the norm. Uh, voice recorder is on. Anti-ice. Off. Window heat. 
on both switches. Uh, trim air, we'll get these on right now. Okay. Now, pressing on. Uh, outflow, manuals, off. Air conditioning, set. Yaw damper, on. Now the air conditioning is set. Trim air, on. Research on. F cargo heat. We're going to leave off till we get airborne. And that's if we can remember. Uh, recirculation valves are on. High flow, on. ECS, which is equipment cooling system to normal. And pack one is on. Two and three are off. Isolations left and right are on. And where are we? Bleeds on. And then down to the EFAS panel. Now what I'm going to do is I like using this one. Let me get that. And I'll tell you why. It's just easier. Okay, so we're going to do decision height. And I always set it to 100. Now for the uh, a Barrow or MDA. This is set up more like the 747-8 panels than the 400. So just a word of caution there because it would say Barrow on a 400. <clears throat> um, we are going to go for 400 above. So we'll just go right up to 500. Now we'll set our VOR on both. I'm going to come down to 20. And we'll click that off and that off. So everything's off. Same thing over here. Because you have to set them on both. You can set your VORs now. Okay. And the uh, one thing it does do is keep them in sync there. Wish it would get the PFDs in sync, but that's for a different time. Okay, we'll go back to engine on that. Okay, so displays, standby, nav selectors are set. All right, so now moving down, we'll just do it. Well, we'll do it this way. That way you get a better view. Uh, speed brake is down. Uh, thrust levers down and closed. And the uh, thrust reversers are down. Flaps are up, zero and zero. And radios. Okay, since we're going to be on VATSIM. Okay, and okay. All right, and all I did is that is the VATSIM Unicom they want us on. That is another Unicom. Okay. Uh, fuel controls are in cutoff and passenger signs refueling is complete so we'll just kind of scroll it down okay ATC clearance and flight door is closed behind us so that takes care of where we're at now bear with me a second here uh, we'll get into the departure brief here momentarily just getting the uh, flight plan sent to VATSIM. So they're okay with it. And uh, get rid of that. Oh, well, we're late in getting out, so we'll make it. Hopefully by then we can get out. Okay. Flight plan has been filed. Stand by.
Okay. Ah. All right, so there we go. Sorry for that again, folks. We are up on VATSIM as we speak. That's not VATSIM. Neither is that. Where is VATSIM? I had VAT spy up. There we are. All right, we are sitting in Perth. Again, if you're interested in flying with us, we are going to be on spot 703. That is in X-Plane, folks. Do not know where that translates out to in any of the other platforms. Um, <clears throat> all right, so that brings us, folks, with the filing. Actually, we're going to do one more thing. And that is get our ACARS program running. That, too, will take just a few seconds. Um, unfortunately, I've tried where you all could see it, and it just didn't seem to work out like I had planned. Ah, DB Vetter, how are you? Is this better flying than the SSG 748? I really don't know. I don't have that. Um, and you're saying the uh, FMC in the 747 disappoints too. Um, I don't have it, so I can't compare. Um, the only thing I can compare to, and it's almost, I want to say like apples and oranges, uh, PMDG and Microsoft versus this or SSG. You know, PMDG is always going to win out. But when you start stacking up the scenery and all <laughs> things, you know how that goes. But, um, yeah, I'm a little still disappointed in the uh, FMS here with the uh, Sparks group. But, you know, folks, for what they've done, I haven't put the latest, greatest mod in here. Um, mainly because... I can't understand in their Discord channel exactly what they've updated. And is it just visuals? By visuals, I mean by this cockpit stuff here. Or did they actually get into the data here um, and clear this like this up? Or these boxes? Um, I don't know. So, and there we go. I just wanted to make sure that came up fine. Um, so I really can't com comment there, but, uh, Hey, welcome aboard. Feel free to join us. We are on VATSIM, uh, equivalent. If you've got a uh, SIM toolkit or, um, um, Navigraph charts, you can find 703 and kind of gauge where that is on the airport. Love to have you join along right now. There's no ATC down here. There is stuff up in Singapore. That's five hours ahead of time, so or five hours down the road. So, all right. So final checks here. Let's get into the P B four start checklist. Heading up to the top here again. All the fuel pumps are on, so we can click the uh, APU to on. Now I do know they went in and updated the time the APU takes to get started. Um, that I do know. I, I understood that in the Discord forums. Like I said, I just haven't put the latest, greatest. Um, and I'll be honest, I never sat on the ramp at Mid-America Airport and timed a 747 firing up the APU. Never did it, so I couldn't tell you what the real time is versus what that what this is. But I do think it fires up kind of quick. And Zebo as well. I think that's just my personal opinion. Do not have any inside information on that. Okay, APU Gen's going to on. Uh, we have the, the bleed on already. Let's come out to here, make sure we have the brake pressure up, and we do. 
uh, fuel quantities are checked and adequate. Shipping papers all loaded up, ready to go. Performance data checked and set. MCP is uh, V2-164, heading 18 or 16 degrees for runway heading, 34,000 four, four for our first initial altitude of cruise. Takeoff speeds one more time for everyone. Uh, okay, you meanies, hang on a second. It timed out already. Uh, 147, 155, 164. In that order for V1, V rotate, V2. Okay, so from here, we a uh, couple more checks here, and then we're ready to push and start. Oop, helps helps to get the right mouse moving here. Okay, stab trim. This one, like we said, we see zero zero here. Uh, Acars is telling me something different. I'm gonna go with them. They're telling us 5.6. See how that looks. A little more. We'll go with that. All right. Um, rudder and aileron trim are zeroed out. Auto start. Now that's going to be found up here for those not familiar. Right here. And guess what, folks? It's time for the departure brief. Um, and for that, that just is we're just going to quickly take a look at the SIDS and STAR. We just went through the V speeds. So uh, let me get some toolkit one more time over here. And of course, that means one more time I could forget it again. Okay, so for the charting, real quick, the updated METAR here came in at 1630Z, which was half hour ago. 090 at 11. Still unlimited visibility, few clouds at 4700. Scattered deck at 8600. We do have a broken layer now at 10,000. Temperature 23 degrees Celsius and 19 degrees Celsius for the dew point. We have 1006 for the... Uh, for the um, uh, Q and H. So, and you can see with the TAF, they've been having scattered showers float through here. We've watched them on Sim Toolkit. Uh, haven't looked outside the plane when one happens. So, but anyway, there is a SIG out for scattered thunderstorms. Moving on, we're gonna go to Navgraph now. Here's our routing out of here. I'm gonna kind of zoom a little bit. It's kind of a zigzag a little zigzaggy out of here not much but a little but we're on the uh, again at the airport here's where we're parked and if you have navgraph either charts or sim toolkit this can be added to sim toolkit or you can use your charts just turn the little green guy on center it and it'll put it right there on your chart and we're right up in here i really don't know where cargo planes park here when they i guess they don't come in that often but anyway, we're going to kind of take a look across the top. ATIS is 113.7 or 123.8. Uh, delivery, as you can see, the rest of the frequencies. I'm not going to go through them. We don't have ATC at the moment. Uh, and then for taxi, the way I see it, we're going to probably push facing south. Taxi out to Bravo. Follow it around. Not sure which one this is, but we'll come down. Oh, Delta. Bravo to Delta to Alpha, and we'll take that all the way down to the end of the runway. Alpha 11. All right, folks. Uh, the runway incursion, we got to watch here. We If we get ATC, that we're in contact with the tower and make sure we're not crossing with aircraft landing on it. Because it is closer to runway heading, we're not getting off on 7,000 feet of runway. I think we could maybe at full power, but it's a stretch. Okay, moving on, let's go to the departure page. And up here in the top, 
You've got departure 118.7, should they come up? 67 feet above ground level, I'm sorry, above uh, MSL. 10,000 feet uh, for the uh, transition. That's something I need to set. Okay, now we're going to come down. Uh, speed maximum 250 knots below 10,000. Uh, max speed of 210. So we can do 250 below 10,000 after MIDLA, M I D L A. There we can't go any faster than 210. But once we cross MIDLA, we can then begin accelerating up. All right, so the procedure here. Initial climb is, uh, uh, where's our runway? There it is. Maximum again, 210 until MIDLA. So we'll track 060. I'm reading the wrong one. Whew. So, okay, so we'll track 116 to MIDLA. From MIDLA, we are going to turn left, track 280 to anchor. Turn left at 254 to Budma, Budma to AV, AV Peps, AV Peps to uh, Habby. Now, we're going to cross AV PES at or above 12,000 feet. So we'll be watching for that. Um, and then SACOM, and then Venup, and then on to AV NEX, which is then where we. Uh, enter our airway November 752. All right, so the altitude restrictions, everything is above, so we're not held down. So that's cool. We can just got to maintain for four miles, to no more than 210 on the speed. Then we just got to make sure we get above 10,000 by BUDMA, AV, PES. We got to be above 12. And above 16, I got a feeling this one's no trouble. 16,000 at SACMO. On to Avnex. And there, folks, is the charts. I'm looking because I got caught last time and missed. Uh, no mention of a restrictive altitude. Double checking. I do not see it. So I won't get uh, flat-footed caught there. That was my total miss on that at all, completely. So uh, I'm just getting set up once airborne to start putting together the other half of this. All right. So there uh, we'll get Navgraph now out of the way. So there you go, folks. Uh, any questions? The departure brief is complete. And here comes the sim, and the sim came up this time. Uh, we're going to also bring that over. And for a short period, that over. Okay, so in the upper and the top there, you can kind of see what the aircraft's doing. Lower right is our Discord channel, available for you all if you want to just click into there. Uh, you can start joining our community we're building. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a struggle for the last four or five months as we've uh, started streaming, but, you know, I haven't been around like some of these guys out here for many years. So one thing we want to do, though, is come back, head down to our uh, FMS. 10,000 is our transition level. We're going to do two. I think we can do both of them here. So hang on here. So what we'll do is click int and then we'll click performance. I know, no, not there. Uh, is it FNAF? There it is. Okay. Next. Forecast work. No. Uh, okay. All right, and VDAV. Hang 
and I want to make sure. So one thing. Okay, that's still there. And what I just did, folks, this is the default FMS for the default 747. That's what this mod's based off of. So there's that. All you got to do is click on the first officers. It doesn't work on this one. And I don't think it works. Oh, it does work down here. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to bring this back to menu. For now, keep it on progress. And we've got our signs on. All right, folks, let's continue on here. Uh, we've got the departure brief going or done. Uh, so that means it is time we're completed with the crew briefing for uh, push and start. So we'll come back up to here. First thing we'll do before we get into this. Uh... Okay. And it's real simple. You just, and if folks are looking for that add on, that's one of those must-haves for X-Plane. This is one of them. Very simple to use. You click Start Plan, uh, set your push back up, and it can be set, folks, for some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, I haven't tried some of the more crazy ones yet. Um, but once you get your aircraft lined the way you want, just click on it. And then click Enter. Router cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Sometimes you get voices in the right country. We're in Australia, so that could be the right voice. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get females. Sometimes you get male. I think it's just the luck of the draw. So, um, so what we need to do is get him on his way. Now, to get him on his way after you're pre-planned, pretty much step by step. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. All right. Now, all we've got left to do, come down to the bottom panel here. We're on 2000. Let's go ahead and go to on. Get the VHF on. And we're uh, set here. He'll be up in front of us here in a minute. If he isn't already, hang on, we'll check. There he is, pulling in. Oh, look what I forgot, folks. All right, so hang on. We'll take care of that real quick. To get rid of the chocks, it's real simple. Come back, click Main Menu on any of the uh, FMSs. Click Ground Handling. First one. Okay, remove. all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to Main connect. Main Menu, and I want that one on Progress. Eight, they're gone. Now, he does that first. What we're going to also do... Turning the hydraulic pumps on to auto. Keeping number four in aux. There is no way, by the way, to get rid of the external power that I know of yet. Seven forty seven is a very versatile aircraft. It can be started with no packs on. One, so two, or three. And bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Okay, so let's get the beacon on. This I do not believe is on four hundreds. Dash eight, maybe, but not the four hundred. It's just on off. Wing lights on. Okay, so we got all our lights on, making sure. And two. Actually, we're going to go to four. And we got to release the parking brake. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. And at that point, we can start engines with it in auto start. Remember, we opted for this. You would basically, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, we'll do one and four. I actually like doing it from this angle because you can see them move out. 
see how they're pulled then we come down I kind of watch till he starts making us turn okay we're gonna go ahead so you all you gotta do is turn the fuel switches on that's it folks everything starts up then um, if you're not with auto start as soon as you pull your switches the system starts the engines turning and once they reach 17 on your uh, or I'm sorry 20 on your lower display here in N2 turn your fuel on and boom she'll light off here it's automatic kind of hear it winding up in the background I do at least I don't know if you can And, oh boy, looks like we're going to start hopping around, so I'll have to shut the computer down after the flight, and then we'll be, uh, I'll be able to do what I need to afterwards. Okay, looks like our engines have stabled. So what we can do now until we're ready, we can always pull them out. Nothing's happening. And that's the uh, nice thing about auto, see? Nothing's building, no oil pressure, no pressure on N2 or N1. EGTs are normal. Yeah, he does this little wiggle. I don't get it why they do it, unless it's just something they do. This is out of my realm. Now, you ask me how we set up on a 747 with a fire truck, I know how to do that. How to push one back, I don't know how to do that. Operation complete. Set parking brake. And parking brake set. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Now we can turn two and three. And now you can see the values starting to rise. See there? And you may not see N1 for a little bit but they're growing we may get oil pressure we may not but once it reaches 20 shut there we go n one's up to point three and light off when the EGT starts roaring up oil pressures rolling up And we're just going to wait for the two and three to stabilize before we tell him disconnect and hand signals. Okay. Disconnecting. All right, folks, that is the start procedure. Let's do the after start now. So the after start is going to start again. Go figure. Top panel. Uh, Toe is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the right. We'll see you next time and have a great flight. And as always, thanks for flying with Mike. Now, with the uh, sign that the pin has been removed, you can now turn your auxiliary pump to auto that we had in aux. It's one of the checklists here, but I do it just so I don't forget. Because sometimes I just move on auto stuff. All right, so the after start, we have ignition to continuous. Now ignition is right here. We'll go to continuous. The APU, now that we're on internal power running on our generator or... or um, um, now that's weird why it didn't click over. We can turn that to off and we can turn the bleed off too. We can turn the packs to on normal. Hydraulic pumps should all be in auto now. Um, and then we're going to do a recall and a flight check, flight control check. 
So for flight controls, somewhere over here. Okay, we'll do it this way since it's being stubborn. There we go. Now we'll go to two. All right, so recall. We got auto throttles, uh, barometric pressures disagree, so. Okay. And they want us to turn. Did they want that up top here? And I skipped it because I don't do that until I'm at the runway. No, that's Zebo. Okay. Again, the problem when you fly multiple aircraft in multiple sims, you get lost with uh, getting things set. We're going to keep the auto throttle off. Um, but let's do the recall. So we'll cancel. Recall. And the auto throttle disconnect is still there. We're going to turn the auto brakes to reject. Actually, we're going to be here. And then we're going to just do now the easy, what the crews will use, a couple things. One, this, I believe it's this uh, item here. When you turn this on, it does it for you. But I know a lot of crews also want to make sure. So what they'll do is they'll go to stat. <clears throat> First off, make sure nothing here is um, hydraulic qualities are good. Pressures are up and temperatures look good along with your APU spooled down and your oxygen. But right here, that's your flight control surfaces out on the wing tail and uh, um, uh, empennage. So we're going to go right and you can see I'm moving. Okay, so ailerons, spoilers. Now, if we were to go outside, see the spoilers come up? Okay. Back elevator. And left. Left, right, left, right. And we're going to do a freedom check, make sure everything's good. And one last check here. Doink. We are going flaps 10. So we'll set that in. All right, folks, we are ready to taxi. Perth traffic, uh, Mac Air 572, taxi to runway three. I am not telling them how because who knows what I have may be wrong. All right, so let me just do a refresh here. Go to fear and parking brake. Taxi checklist, real quick. Taxi lights on, landing lights off. EFIS is set. So, runway, taxi off, okay. Lights are set. Here we go, folks. Oop, I didn't get the parking brake. All right, here we go. Heading out on Taxiway Bravo. Up ahead, we'll get on Delta. Okay, and then once we get down to the end of the runway, uh, We'll get into the before takeoff checklist. But for now, we're just making our turn here in just a second. 
just remember you're ahead of the nose gear. If you don't believe me, see where the pilots sit here, nose gears back here. So you got to kind of go past a little to follow it. Here we go on to Delta. Our next big turn is coming up here. Oh, that's some crazy scenery there. How much do you want to bet? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'll bet it's there. <laughs> I used to drive a truck. Yeah, I'm sure it's there. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm talking about here in a minute. More important, getting taxied in here, right? Okay, what I was kind of teasing and giggling at is that right here. See that hump down and up? I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, right. That's a little severe, but it's, you know, it's flight sim and I don't drive a car in it, so it doesn't matter. All right, so we're holding short uh, runway three. Uh, let's do the before takeoff checklist before we figure out where the airplane is because he may get in here. So the MCP, we'll go into the middle here to make it simpler, is set. Again, 174 is what we're going to try to hold on the climb out. There's our runway heading, 016, and we're bank angled at... Uh, it's in auto. 34,000 is our initial climb. Um, and auto throttle is now on. All cleared off. Passenger signs are on. Rejects on the uh, auto brakes and uh, passenger signs on. Continuous ignition on. Uh, we'll set the clock on the runway. Transponder. Now we're going to move it all the way over. Click traffic here weather here more than likely we're not going to see the weather folks on this side also traffic it's on but we're going to go with terrain okay and EFIS is set uh, we're going to do one more recall recall complete Flight attendants, we don't have any. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we are preparing to depart. Make sure you're in your seat, seatbelts on, and uh, tray tables up. If not, enjoy the ride, because you may end up on the top of the uh, ceiling. All right, so we are ready to take off. All right, let's see where we are with traffic here. Uh, let's kind of zoom in, see where... Oh, what did he do? I don't know. Let's find out. Perth traffic, Mac Air 572, type 747, departing runway 3. All right, texted him and transmitted in the open. If I don't hear back from him, we're going to go. Give him a couple seconds. And that is part of the reason why, you know, I had someone ask me, do I fly on VATSIM? 
Yes and no. I really don't. Oh, he's lining up for six. Do we want to watch him or do we want to go? Well, he is not within 10 miles. No, we're good to go. We're going. He hasn't chimed in. Here we go, folks. And I don't see his traffic blip out there. All right. Strobes on. Okay. Remember what I said? We got to go past where we're going to turn and then crank on it over. We are going to hustle. We're not going to dally. All right. Landing lights on. We're going to go ahead and turn the engines on. And coming up to 60. Okay, rolling. Clock's on. No traffic. Eighty knots. Little left rudder there. Ooh, she's still wanting to try to get some sky. V one. Rotating. Okay. Coming down with the nose a little. Gear up. For real? Okay, we gotta make our turn. There we go. Gotta love the autopilot when it doesn't want to behave.
All right, and all right, so folks, that was kind of, gotta love it. These are some of the problems we run into when we're running this way. I actually never had that autopilot issue. That's the first time. Okay, so we're at flaps five. We're gonna roll the gear to off. And we go to flaps one. All right. All right, so let's do that after takeoff checklist as we're getting through 3,000 feet here. Uh, all right, so after takeoff, positive rate of climb, gear up. Uh, flaps retract on schedule, auto brakes are off and show off. Autopilots are engaged. We'll monitor the pressurization. 10,000 feet, we're going to turn those landing lights off. Now you can monitor your pressurization right here, folks. And then transition leveler, which is 10,000, also will turn off the uh, continuous ignition. One thing I like to set here. Oh, this one's not going to be too much of a pain. And what I'm doing is just setting in our, what I like to use to constrain our climbs. We're going to go ahead and go flaps up. And that'll take care of the after takeoff checklist, even though I know it's way, way the heck up here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go flaps up. Okay. He must be doing pattern work there because he's still in the air. So, okay, 7,100 feet. And we just passed Angkor, headed to, gosh, they are so small, Budma, then to AVPES. Now, remember. Both of these had speed restrictions, let's find out, or uh, altitude. But uh, we have to be above 10,000 feet. I think we're going to make it. We're going to find out. Let me dial in. So We are out over the ocean, but still, they want us above 10,000 feet, if at all possible. We've got four miles to go and 14, uh, 1,600 feet. The problem one's going to be the next one, 12,000. I don't know if we can do that in that short of a time frame. Okay, Budma puts us at standard. That'll get us up over it. There we go. Lights off. Transition means come off continuous. And let's do the after takeoff here. Flaps up and 10,000 transition set. So we're set to the approach. Do the same thing here. And then we're going to get rid of them. Just kind of in the way for the flight. 
like Cruz, I know y'all are a little jealous of us. Yeah, we're not going to get above 12,000 by there. No way. Yeah, I had a feeling that's what was limiting us, was we were inclined. Of course. Oh, yeah. They're not going to agree because I haven't clicked standard over here yet. There we go. And that's another thing to watch for, folks. If you see it kind of sluggish, look down. See if you're still... I mean, technic... Oop, get that back. Technically, it should do it automatically. They're working on it. It's all I can say. Oops. And Saxum is 16,000 feet. Okay, I think she's definitely clear of that one. So we're on our way, folks. Let's take a look outside the airplane. The beautiful queen of the skies. And off we go. So let's get outside again, take a look at the queen. And as we are starting to get above 30,000 feet, we're going to set up with the uh, in-flight entertainment on, which we just crossed, so stand by. Now we're uh, using Pretzel, Pretzel Rocks Epic Station. So let me... Uh, one thing here. And all right, we are on our way, folks. Feels like our first flight, but we're not. Um, if you want to make predictions for what it'll be like five hours from now, by all means, go right ahead. But folks, we are getting into cruise phase here. Uh, still got 3,000 to go, but you know, I'm into that mode right now. Down below, let's get the, what would be the electronic sign turned to auto. And we'll let them get out of their seats so they can take care of any uh, cargo issues or anything down below. And off we go, folks. the wipers they're still green <laughs> oh well really nice really nice bird over And uh, for those of you that, uh, like I do, like to watch Live Spy uh, 57, or Spy 5757, I'm just not gutsy enough yet with X-Plane to go outside and watch my takeoffs. 
and I'm not going to replay them because. But I'm just not that gutsy, folks. <laughs> Give you a nice look there at the platform taking us over to Singapore.
Okay, folks, we're going to pause the music here for oh, about 5-10 uh, minutes, maybe a little longer. We're going to do the quick arrival brief into Singapore. Uh, <clears throat> what you're going to see, we can't program into the uh, sim because for some strange reason, X-Plane forgot to put the procedures in. I don't get it. I don't understand it. X-Plane, eh. Those are some of the things I don't like about you right now that I would right now wish I could put FSX up here for you. So, uh, but anyway, we'll work around this uh, shortfall and uh, hope for the best. So, uh, let's get some toolkit up here and uh, uh, rock on with the uh, arrival brief, shall we? Okay, uh, here again going to uh, first get on the right page all right so we're coming in on the reprove one bravo wait, wait, that's wrong that is an incorrect arrival my bad i just realized that it's supposed to be that one all right so we're coming in on the one alpha for repove um Repove, we got to make sure we cross under 21,000 feet and at or around 250 knots. Wow. Starting to feel like we're back on the Paro approach, 18,250. All right. Then we're going to get up to Reams, R E M E S. That's uh, at or above 6,000. And then 22 miles later, we'll come up to Samco. Uh, that is at or above 4,000, and we are to be slowed no faster than 190. So we're hoping we'll be close to 10,000 feet by repo. So let's go to the top of the page. We are still on VATSIM. For how long? I don't know, but we'll find out here as we proceed in. Uh, ATIS is 128.025, uh, elevation 22 feet, and our transition level is 13,000. Okay, I'm just writing that down so I can make sure that's updated. Uh, again, we'll go right over the routing down here at the bottom. Oh, excuse me for yawning, folks. Ah, oh, 24-hour shift yesterday, still kicking my butt today. All right, so from Repove, at or below 21,000, speed 250, to REMS, R-E-M-E-S, at or below 6,000. There, we need to be below 220. And then finally, uh, we proceed to Samco, and there, we need to be at or above four grand, and uh, our speed needs to be under 190. So we're going to begin to set up our, uh, basically, we'll be down with some flaps. And as we turn in at Samco, uh, we'll be uh, slowing for the approach. Now, once we hit Samco, we're going to be uh, grabbing the ILS to left here at uh, Singapore. Uh, you can see the frequencies here across the top. Right now, again, no ATC. The ones we're more important about, hang on a second, this is getting a little distractive. There we go. Um, Okay, so uh, the localizer is 110.9, uh, and that is ICW, India Charlie Whiskey is how it's identified. The final approach course is 023, uh, and then uh, Anuam, Anuma uh, is where we need to be at 3,500 feet on glide slope. All right, so missed approach, should we need to uh, shoot it, is climb to 1,000 feet, then make a left-hand turn to 4,000 via heading 335. 
Okay, now I see it. There's a lot of dotted lines here on the map. I kind of couldn't find the one I was looking for. And then uh, on the PU, uh, Papa Uniform Radial, 356, Papa Uniform being, not sure. Where is, oh, it's uh, identified uh, 115 decimal one. Uh, we're going to head out to the 20 DME and hold, or unless ATC has other plans for us. 13,000 against transition. And here is the picture of our arrival, Samco. And we're going to be basically turning in on the localizer. So we'll be 16 miles out when we join the localizer. And at An A Numa, we'll be uh, at 3,500. Is that right? 3,500 feet? Yeah and should be on the glide path. All right, uh, again, it's 110.9er, and the uh, identification for the localizer is India Charlie Whiskey 023. Down below, final look here, we'll get an idea of what we're gonna see on final. We're gonna see ALSIF 2 uh, approach lights, reels, Pappy's left and I think right we'll see. There's the picture of our missed approach. Last but not least, for those of you that are always asking to see it, here are the minimums. Uh, and uh, so here you go, folks. All right, so for this arrival, we're going to plan a V-Ref of... 145 with the approach being at 150, flaps 30, auto brake set to 3. And folks, with that, that will wrap up the uh, uh, arrival brief. And as you can see on the map, we're getting closer and closer. We're over one of the bigger islands to Indonesia. So, and then once we get on the ground, our parking area is up here to the north in the West Cargo. So anything from Whiskey 5 on is where we'll get off to make it. And then once there, like I said, it was in the 500. Somewhere in here is where we'll park. All right, folks, so there it is. Uh, we're going to get everything moved out of the way. One last look. we got a couple of planes uh, on Sim Toolkit working around here. Looking at uh, VATSIM, we got one on the ground, and uh, just us working in, I think. Yeah, that's even close. So, uh, should be a pretty simple straight-in approach, hopefully. Hopefully things will work in our favor that way, so. Alright, so let's move that out. And folks, that should bring us in. We're now 150 miles out. So we'll go ahead and run one more song and hope you enjoy.
Okay, folks, we're 50 miles out. We're going to shut the uh, music down for now. And uh, we're going to proceed in. Uh, we've set the auto brakes to three. We're running the uh, decent uh, checklist. We're going to keep the, the uh, signs at auto. Uh, pressurization we've checked and looks good. Uh, we'll announce the descent. We'll, let's get into the middle here. It just makes it a lot easier. Hit recall. Looks good. Auto brakes are set. Approach brief has been completed. And uh, we are looking to head in. Um, let's see here. All right, folks. So we're just uh, uh, waiting for the top descent to get a little lower and then uh, we will begin descending into Singapore again all right so again I'm getting uh, pummeled by work again you that's okay um, uh, let's see here. Approach briefing complete. Transition altitude is 13,000. Something we need to plug in here. One, three. It really doesn't affect the flight. No, I don't see it anywhere here. other than this page. Okay. One more try. All right, we can't do anything with it, so. We will start down here at thirty two miles, okay. And of course top of descent. Oh, is it showing? No it's not. It's not showing up here either. Okay, so let's make sure. Duh. Okay, there we go. Still not showing up, so... Let's go ahead and uh, bring up VNAV here. Again, we're going with 145, so 30. Okay. Boy. All right, so we're seven miles out. And let's come up here. Set this for 4,000. Okay, we are descending. We'll pull some power back. 
Alright folks, we're on our descent. We just crossed top of descent. And I will be right back. Okay, so we're set now. We've uh, lowered the range on our nav display. And uh, we're looking for Singapore. Uh, kind of looks hosed up here. Okay, so we don't know. Let me take a look here. Okay, so that spy has locked up on us, so we'll give it a try this route. Okay. Looks like we're fine coming in. Okay, we're through 8,000. Looks like we're going to firm up just nicely. All right, cool. Okay, let's see how we're doing down here. Watching to make sure we're gonna firm up here. I don't think we are. Yes, we are. Navrad still isn't. Okay, we're at 220. Speed breaks off. And I'm going to set up here for 4,000. Starter. See if that starts us down. Okay. And we're going to start slowing to one ninety. Actually, one eighty. Get a uh, notch of flaps in. We'll go to five. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Watch our descent. Okay, so here we go, folks. Um, gonna 
restart that spy. Now that we have... Okay, I don't know why that spy doesn't want to load. Okay, we're at 190. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't arm the speed brake. All right. Okay, we're at flaps five, brakes three, passenger signs on. We think the speed, well, let's take a look instead of thinking. See him deployed. Again, auto brakes three K okay. verified. Okay, landing checklist. Before we get to it, uh, flaps will bring down one more notch to 10. Uh, gear will come down with the ILS. Speed brakes were armed, we hope. We don't see it showing yet. And uh, landing lights coming on. Alrighty, so we're level and set. Just again, make it sure, because sometimes they'll deploy. Okay, here we go, folks. We're waiting on the ILS. If it doesn't, well, we're set up to at least begin our way in there. Anything, it should come up here. Okay. All right, folks. Well, we're starting to get some clouds. Final check here. One ninety and above four thousand. Okay, thirty five hundred for end. So as soon as we cross uh, Samco, we're going to start our descent for thirty five hundred. And wouldn't you know, here comes that layer of clouds. Yep, 
down to 1,800 feet. Although it was supposed to be a few, now it's starting to look a lot more than a few. Okay, we're two miles from Samco. Does not look like we're going to see anything related to our ILS. Okay, there we go, starting our descent. Okay, we are 13 miles out, got the runways in sight, gear is going down. Flaps full. Do not know if the spoilers are armed. We'll worry about that on the ground. We are now nine miles out. 2,700. Flying a heading of zero, two, three. Visibility really sucks. I think that's the runway straight in front of us. I'm going to line up better for. All right, folks, so we've been hand flying this now for about 12 miles, and that is our runway. 160 flaps full, still no indication of spoilers armed. And just so you all know, I've been kind of watching 
to see if our ILS came alive. It did not. So we are lined up. Singapore traffic, uh, Mac Air 572, uh, five mile final gear down, two left. Planning to park in the cargo area west. Okay. Stabilized. A little off the center line. We're correcting because of that wind. It's only six knots, so let's uh, nose over a little. Get this descent going a little steeper. Okay. Power back. Use the power. to the Pappies. Reverse. Idle reverse. No spoilers. And 80 knots. And brakes disarm. Right. And <clears throat> well, the uh, distance remaining markers would not be in the taxiway, but that's okay. Singapore traffic, uh, Mac Air 572 clear, runway two left, West Cargo. Okay. All right, folks, landing lights off. Any ice off. Real quick, punch those up and F cargo heat on, strobes off. Okay, and let's do the after landing checklist. Landing lights flaps. They need to go to zero and zero. Uh, stave trim. What are we going, six units? Yep. Which is where they're at. Uh, we take... Okay, and uh, that airplane decided to do that. Actually, I planned it that way, folks. Yeah, right. Okay, 
as we swing around here MCP reset and it is set flight directors will go ahead and turn those off as with the uh, ape auto tr uh, throttles uh, transponder on auto brakes and APU start okay APU is running and there's where we're going folks right there it's not the greatest I don't think it's very accurate but it is what it is okay and uh, looks like uh, we landed 448 feet a minute I guess 400 when I took off huh? not too bad being that I had to hand fly it in I'll take it uh, second here folks outside the airplane we go that's what I wanted to see okay Let's go ahead now and get our taxi lights off. And we're not going to be going all the way up there, folks. Alright, we are in the blocks, folks. So let's go to here. First thing we do, set the parking brake. Uh, next thing, taxi lights are off, chocks. Or stop the clock, sorry, not chocks. One. Two. So, folks, from the time we started it on the taxiway, five hours. From the time of brake release, 4 hours 55 minutes. Alright, so electrical, let's go on ground on the APU. And now we can kill the fuel switches, which are right here. Alright, fuel pumps and can go off, as can the uh, hydraulics. So one, two, we'll keep two of them on for the APU. And turn these guys to off. And this guy to aux. All right. And the NTI system's already turned off. Uh, and our F cargo's off. All right, and what we're going to do now is come down to the bottom one here, since that never recognized. We'll go to the main menu, ground select, request chocks. Do an eight. And the chocks are in. All right, and we're going to actually go on external power again. Okay, up to five should be there. Doink, doink. And all we got to do is turn the APU off. 
turn the pumps off and there you go folks welcome in to Singapore hope you enjoyed the flight like I said we uh, put her on the ground with 448 feet per minute uh, looked like we ate about 6,000 feet of runway uh, which looking at top cat uh, That would help if I was on landing. Uh, correct runway. Yep, let's uh, just do it. Should have used 7,000 feet of runway, so you know you can't complain, folks. Came in just like it's supposed to. Pretty good job there at the uh, Sparks Group. All right, well, that's going to wrap up today. Hope you all enjoyed the flight. Uh, tomorrow, uh, not sure where we're heading, uh, but we won't be streaming. So um, <clears throat> we're going to take a day, kind of rest, uh, recoup up, because looks like work's trying to be a real royal pain in the you-know-where. So um, for now, that's going to wrap the uh, show up. Hope you enjoy. God bless, and uh, we'll catch you all uh, the next time out.